Good morning. Hope everybody's doing okay this morning. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit better. Can't fix it with a face like that. What are you going to do? <laughs> Sally like said, Why are you giving me that look? Said, that ain't no look. That's my face. <laughs> That ain't no look. That's just my face. Hey, good morning, Miss Cindy. Good to see you this morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Monday morning. It is, ain't it? It's Monday. This whole vacation thing's got me so messed up, I don't even know what day of the week it is. We did go to church. <laughs> it was Sunday yesterday. Morning, Miss Grace. Genesis chapter 8 this morning. If you got your Bibles, Genesis chapter 8. We'll be there in just a minute. Morning, Brother Benny. There you is again. Everywhere I go, there you is. Amen. We well, are. <laughs> Brother Benny, I told Sally, I said, I'm not even setting a clock. I ain't getting up in the morning. I'm going to sleep. Vacation has wore me out. <laughs> and guess what? Woke up at 7 o'clock. No, I didn't. I woke up at 6 o'clock. And, uh, so here we are, close to 7.30 anyway. We are glad to be home. We're glad to be here. We actually had one more night in the house that, that we had rented. <clears throat> we rented a house and with a privacy fence and a pool. But Sally got to lay out by the pool a couple of days and uh, had a good time. Morning, Miss Kathy. Morning, Miss Therese. And we actually had, we, through today, we could have stayed till I think checkout time would have been 10 o'clock this morning. And we talked about it yesterday on, on the way to church yesterday morning. And she said, yep, I'm ready. <laughs> and I said, okay, if you're ready, we'll just pack up and leave. We ain't got to stay one more night. And she said, I'm ready. Everywhere we go, if, if we ever leave home, after about three days, we're ready to come home. Maybe even before that. But we had a good time. We enjoyed it. We rested. Um, she laid out by the pool. I slept and ate. That's the, the majority of the things that I did. <laughs> slept and ate the whole time we were gone. While she was by the pool, I was on the couch. I wasn't exaggerating when I told you that's what I was going to do. <laughs> I slept and ate. If, if I go anywhere, Miss Kathy, it's, it's almost like the perfect vacation for me, and I hadn't talked her into doing it yet, the perfect vacation would be for me and her to drive our car somewhere and hide them and get an Uber back to the house and then turn all the lights off, lock the doors, and just stay here. Tell everybody we're gone. <laughs> And just stay here. That would be the perfect vacation. Um, but anyway, Genesis chapter 8, we'll get right into it this morning. And I uh, appreciate everybody praying. We did have a great trip. Appreciate everybody taking care of church. There's Miss Amanda and uh, Miss Jerese and Miss Cindy and all those folks. Appreciate y'all being faithful, being in your place. And uh, I heard Thursday night went really, really, really good with the kids. And, uh, <laughs> and then yesterday... We watched, uh, I watched, Sally watched some at different times, watched uh, some of both services yesterday, and uh, I did not get to see, I got to see Wednesday night, did go live, I, I did get to see that, but I didn't get to see the, the message, uh, but I'll go back and watch Brother Denny, Brother Mike did a great job yesterday, and the choir did a great job, everything was good, so... Praise the Lord. I'm glad that we can go somewhere and people take care and, and the church run and, and, and function. Please pray for us. We've got some, some big decisions this week that, that we need to get on and we need to get busy and need to do. Um, just one thing, being away, being in other churches, being in other places, watching how other people do things, it, it, it stirs things in me, you know, to, to not want to change, but to want to do better. And so we've got some big decisions with, with, with building. Um, we sat yesterday, we went to church at, at Liberty Baptist in Lyons yesterday morning and, 
and with Brother Michael Plowman and, and that church down there is, is beautiful. That church is, is, it's big, it's huge, but it, it's also very, very nice. And Sally made the statement that our, our building is one of the things that's holding us back and it is. And so we, we need to either make the decision to move and find something that that's more suitable or, and, and, and that's not my first option. I'll just go ahead and tell you right off the bat. That's not my first choice. Or we need to spend the money and upgrade and fix and clean and paint and, and work and fix what we got. And I don't want to put any more money in a building that we're just leasing. So the building's up for sale. He's made us an offer and I think we need to get on it and we need to buy it and we need to make sure that we make sure we do it right. Make sure that we're safe. Make sure that we're not, not buying a headache or bigger headache than we already got. And we need to get it done. So please pray. Please pray. The, our church, Canaan Baptist Church, some of y'all will understand this. Some of y'all won't understand this. Our church is, I, I've said this, I've said this uh, all along. There are worship churches. And, and, and this is just me. I, I'll, I'll make a preacher mad somewhere here with what I'm saying. But to me, there are worship churches. And they're working churches. I understand you're supposed to do both. I understand that, that there's got to be a blend. I understand both of those are necessary, worship and work. But there, there are some churches that are, that are, I, I, I don't want to say it the wrong way because I'm going to make somebody mad. There's some churches that are uptown, fancy, and there's some churches that, that are people. And, regular blue collar or or no collar <laughs> we, we, we may be we may be lower blue collar to no collar uh people and if i offend our people with that then, then i don't know what to i don't know what to say we're just regular people we're, we're just we're just plain old folks and there's some preachers there's some preachers that are are how do I say this? They're, 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 they're good people, but they're just high class. They're just high class. They're, they're thoroughbreds. Maybe that's the best way. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's good. They're needed. They're necessary. They're thoroughbreds. They're racehorses. Man, they, they can preach. They can show. I mean, look at them shine. Look at them. You, you just, there's some preachers that way. And then, there's some preachers, I guess, that I know one, <laughs> it's just a plow horse. I, I'm not a racehorse. I don't need a, a big fancy sanctuary. I don't think that fits me. I don't fit our church. But we do need clean and painted and nice and homey and welcoming. And and we, we, we need to work on that. Please pray. Please pray that, that we make right decisions. We do this the right way. I want to honor God. I want to honor God. That, that's, that's the main thing. Genesis chapter 8. Let's read. <laughs> Ain't nothing changed. I still get choked up and teary eyed and, and over, over some simple thoughts. Just some simple things. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Thank the Lord for simple things. Genesis chapter 8. Man, don't this start good. And God remembered Noah. Ain't that a good place to start? <laughs> Isn't it amazing that God remembers us? When we forget him so often. Praise the Lord. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of the heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained. 
and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the earth and 50 days, the waters were abated. And after the end of the 150 days, where did earth come from in there? My, my bifocals got me, folks. I skipped the line. Verse 3, And the waters returned from off the earth continually, and after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, and the tenth, in, in the tenth month, I'm having a hard time seeing and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which, which, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. She returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days. And again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening. And lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, so Noah knew the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days. And he sent forth the dove which returned not again to him any more. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle and of creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl, whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth of the, uh, uh, out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more of every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. We find what the the Bible, what the what the the commentator, the the writer, calls a new beginning, a new beginning. Morning, brother Jason, brother Pat. Good to see y'all. Paul Cooper. Good to see you. Simple things. Simple things. And God remembered Noah and every living thing. Here the rain has come, the flood has come, the entire earth. We said yesterday, it's, it's, it's a complete earth flood. It wasn't a local flood. It wasn't a contained flood. Every inch of planet earth to the highest mountain was underwater. Now that, that's a flood. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what science says couldn't happen. That's what science says. It is is impossible. We we must have evolved over billions of years, billions and billions of years. This this happened when actually, scripturally, biblically, there, there's only six to eight thousand years of recorded history. That's all there is. Recorded history, scriptural history, six to eight thousand years is all there is, and and probably closer to seven thousand. And, and here you find that the flood is, is the factor that science will not look at and will not include in their figures. Every scientist that has legitimately sat down and, and figured in the flood has said, it works. <laughs> it works. 
where 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 does the layers of of earth come from that that we call years? Where do the fossils come from on mountain tops and in mountain top lakes? There's saltwater creatures. Where 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 does all this come from? The flood, the flood, all that happened. And and when you look at this, the the same people, the same people look at the word of God and say, no, it's not possible. The scripture's not possible. It's just a book. It's man-made. <laughs> no, the Bible is God-made, and God made it. And it's the, the Bible, the Word of God, that changes people's lives, that, 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 that brings us. The Bible says being born again, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You're saved through the Word of God. This is the seed that God plants. This, this is the way that God reaches a heart. It's through the through the word. And and we need to get back to the simple things. I didn't get up this morning and think simple things, but boy, it sure has jumped on me. The simple things. He gets up and and the, the rain stops and the waters begin to dry and things be, begin to dry. And the Bible says that he sent forth a raven. <coughs> In verse number six and seven. At the end of those forty days, Noah opened up the window. Not 40 days total, but 40 days after the rain stops and things are drying up and he's sitting on top of a mountain, this, this ark that has no steering wheel and no, no motor, God has landed it in the right place to where things could dry up around it as the waters went down and he opens up and the Bible says he opened the window of the ark which he'd made and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. That raven would go and, and come and go and come. Ravens eat flesh. Ravens eat flesh. There's plenty of that floating around in the water. There's plenty of that. Animals, men, there's plenty of that around. They found plenty. He's still going to and fro. He's got plenty to do, but he turned loose a dove. And he sent forth the dove. The dove couldn't find nowhere to sit. The dove couldn't find no grit, no no sand, no, no nothing for its crawl, nothing to eat. And so the dove came back. The dove, the dove came back. Said, "Nope, this is not ready yet. This is not this is not where we need to be yet." He turned it loose again, and verse number ten. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf. So the waters were gone, the trees are showing again, not just the mountaintop, but the trees are showing, the olives are there, the olive tree's there, she's got a leaf in her mouth, and so it, it's a message back to Noah, okay, we're, we're getting ready. He stayed another seven days, he turned loose the dove, and the dove didn't come back again, verse number 12. It said it returned not again unto him anymore. Somebody said that just proved dove season open in South Georgia. <laughs> he let the dove loose and nobody came. But listen, listen, there's only one problem with that old joke. There weren't no people out there with no gun. There weren't no people out there. All the people were inside the ark. <laughs> so he let him go. Notice, if you will, one thing I want you to, to, to notice. All these things, God spoke to Noah he comes out, the, the, the first thing that Noah does in verse number 20 when they come out, God says, let all these animals off, You everybody's coming out, and they, they're all going to reproduce, they're all going to refill the earth, and all these things are happening. And verse number 20, Noah building an altar unto the Lord. Noah building an altar unto the Lord. As I was reading this last night before I went to bed, and got up again this morning and read through it one more time before we turned the camera on. As I was reading verse 20, uh, I was reminded that yesterday or day before, whenever it was, whenever they were loading the ark, that he said, take of seven of the clean beasts, seven of the clean beasts. And I said, that was for food. Fat boy messed up. No, no, fat boy didn't mess up. He took, no, Noah building an ark, verse 20, he took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings. The clean beast, the clean animals were for offering to the Lord. Fat boy thinks fleshly. We put them clean beast in there because we're going to be grilling and chilling while we're on the ark. We're going to be eating. We're going to get us something to eat. No, no, that's, that's for the Lord. Take seven of those clean beasts and put them on there. 
You're going to need an offering. You're going to need a sacrifice. Praise the Lord. And so he offers an, uh, 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 an offering. Look at verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore. Well, where, where's our offering? Where's our offering? Brother Benny, I don't know. I'd have to go back and how long after the rain stopped did y'all remind me? I got one more point to make. I'm chasing Benny's rabbit. It stopped raining in verse five. No. Fountains of the deep, verse number two, the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. The waters returned from off the earth continually. After the end of 150 days, the waters were abated and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventh day and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. So that's three months. And it came to pass the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he'd made and sent forth a raven. And he sent forth a dove. Also he sent forth a dove. So verse 3, Brother Benny, y'all think with me, all you, all you Bible. So Joe Dale, you a Bible scholar, help me, man. Chapter number 8 in Genesis, how, how long after the rain stopped did God send the dove out? How long, but what, what this period of time? The Bible says the waters, the rain from heaven was restrained in verse two. But then it says, and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. So there's 150. And then in the seventh month, the ark landed on top of the mountain and the waters decreased continually. Until the 10th month, that's three months. So how do you add the 150 days, verse 3, verse 3, the rain stopped the end of verse 2, and the waters returned continually. How long is that? <clears throat> At the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. Is that 150 added in with the three months in verse 5? I don't see nobody popping up here with no big answers. 150 days is about yep, about five months. So five months in verse three, and then verse four and five is the seventh month and the tenth month. That's three months. Is that eight months? Do we add those or we do? Y'all want to see something I do a lot? I don't know. <laughs> is Luke watching this? Is Luke going to see this today? Luke, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how long it was. 150 days, five months, three months in verse four and five. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days. Is that 40 more days? That's another month. Eight, nine months after the rain stopped. Did it take that long for the water to dry up? That's possible. It's possible. I don't, it may, it may say somewhere in, in the scripture, it may tell us a, a clearer picture, but right now I don't have that. I don't know. And then how long did it take? Verse number eight, he sent the dove out. In nine, it didn't find anywhere to rest and came back. And then seven more days and he sent the dove out again. And it came in and had an olive leaf. And he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again. So there's two more weeks. If you add them, but, but the water, where it says, I, I'm not sure. Now, I'm sure that we can study. I'm sure we can dig. Somebody's done this before. We can find somebody that, that knows. But if you add that, that water's abated continually, how long is that? And then you got the 150 days and then you got the three months. If you add all that together, you're looking at nine months or so. And then a couple of weeks that he sent the dove out and back, out and back, out and back. 
um, that just the the fact that the dove flew out and came back means I was the one hunting because I couldn't hit the joker to start with. <laughs> but but anyway, I don't know how long that, I don't know how long it was. I'm sure that for Noah and the people in the ark, it was too long. <laughs> we were ready to get out of there. I don't know. One more thing. One more thing, brother Benny. I will study it. I, 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 you got once you get my brain to to thinking, it won't go away. If I don't study it, if I don't go try to find it, it'll be two o'clock in the morning. I'll wake up and and I'll go, oh, brother Benny, <laughs> and and it, it won't be pretty. Anyway, I want you to look at one more thing. Noah's first act is is to make an offering. Noah's first act is not to get off and kiss the ground. Noah's first act is, is to look up <laughs> and offer a, a, a sacrifice to God. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. He smelled the offering and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for, for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing. As I have done. Now notice verse 22. Hey, Miss Pam, good to see you. Notice verse number 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Global warming my hind leg. You understand? Global warming, my hind leg. We just turn it off right there, can't we? Send that to somebody you know that needs that. Global warming, my hind leg. While the earth remaineth, it's still here. Seed time and harvest. And cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. The same God that created the world, the same God that gave us his word, the same God that saved my soul said global warming is a bunch of hooey. You hear me? That's what he said. <laughs> I heard him. He said, it's hooey. <clears throat> Cold and heat, summer and winter, while the earth remaineth. It's not going to stop. It's not going to, you're not going to destroy the world. You're not going to destroy the world. Uh, I, I spent most of my youth thinking that the big, bad, nasty Russians, and, and they were some big, bad, nasty Russians, are going to push the button and blow the world up. I spent most of my youth growing up in, the, in, a, in a nuclear, <laughs> atomic age, and, and there's going to be a bomb, and we're going to blow the world up. When the Bible says exactly how the world's going to end, exactly what's going to happen, the Bible tells us what's going to be until it's gone. And, and for people to sit around and worry, you bunch of tree huggers, come on. Come on. Noah didn't get off the earth and kiss the ground. Noah didn't go, didn't, didn't, didn't get off the ark and go hug a tree. Noah got off the earth, <laughs> burned something. Hello. Noah got off the ark and started a fire. <laughs> Man, all that carbon emission. He's destroying ozone there. Noah got off the ark and built a fire and offered a sacrifice to God. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Somebody said, has anybody seen the ark? Has anybody found the ark? Everybody's looking for the ark of the covenant. Everybody's looking. I believe, <laughs> I believe Noah burned it. One piece at a time. Hello. That, that ain't Bible. Don't get all sideways with me. I ain't got no proof for that. But he built a fire out of something. Noah 
<laughs> builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. He burnt something. Hello, might as well be part of the ark. We don't need it no more. <laughs> he burned it. If it was a little bit chilly, that, well, wait a minute. If it was summertime at night, Miss Noah said, build me a fire, I'm freezing. <laughs> Amen. Chapter number eight, verse 22, proves global warming is fake false and and only a money grabbing scheme that's what it proves while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease that's what god said that's what god said it's not going to change it's not going to go away man's not going to destroy the earth <laughs> miss kathy you cold <laughs> We get you some of that art wood, build a fire. <laughs> Sally be freezing to death all the time. Amen. All right. That's it. That's all I got this morning. Chapter nine tomorrow, I believe. Let's see what we're looking at tomorrow. What we're looking at. We're looking at the rainbow. Looking at the rainbow tomorrow, the covenant that God made. Amen. All right, if you have questions, if you have something, if you got ideas, pop in there, say something, send me a message, and uh, I hope you'll serve the Lord today. More than ever, more than ever, now's the time. More than ever, now's the time to get busy, to get to work, to do something for God, to leave something behind. More than ever. Amen. <laughs> it's the, Brother Benny, Brother Benny. I'm concerned today about saying things that hurt people's feelings. I'm trying to be, didn't, didn't the man say we're supposed to show mercy and be nice? I could sell art wood and pay for the building. I could, but, <laughs> but <laughs> there would be some people out there that wouldn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> there would be some people out there that would buy. I could sell a lot of art wood if I just had a pile of wood. <laughs> I could sell a lot. I found the art, Brother Kendall. I found it. I found it. And I chopped it up, made firewood out of it. You want some? <laughs> they, they, man. Mm, I got to be careful. I'll say something that makes somebody mad. I'm trying to trying to be merciful. The preacher said yesterday we're supposed to show mercy. The Bible says, according to the preacher yesterday, that if we don't show mercy, we're not going to receive mercy. Mm. I guess I better be merciful. Brother Benny slept through church yesterday. We uh we met Brother Benny and Miss Tina for supper Friday night. Went to Longhorns. Ate, then Sally wanted to go to Chili's and get one of them chocolate chip cookies covered up with ice cream and chocolate syrup. So we we left Longhorns and then went to, to Chili's. We stayed out all night eating. That's all I did the whole time we're gone. Eat, 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 eat. My face looks fat this morning. I'm not so, <laughs> my, my belly looks fatter. <clears throat> all I did was eat and sleep. So we went to church. We went to, to eat Friday night. Then Sunday we got up and drove over to Lyons, Georgia, and went to Liberty Baptist Church with Brother Benny and Miss Tina, and uh, went and ate lunch with them. So I'm tired. Of yeah. Vacation wore me out. I told Sally I don't need to eat for about three days. I just need to. And then we went and ate. <laughs> Yep. All right. Miss Tessa. You, you, yeah, we, we, we in agreement. <laughs> we in agreement. We could eat. I love to eat. I just, that's it. All right. It's good to be home. Hope everybody's doing well. And uh, Sally said, are we still on vacation even though we're home? Yes, we still got two more days of vacation. 
two more days. What are we going to do? <laughs> sleep and eat. <laughs> just sleep and eat. Just do it in a different place. With different people, I guess. If y'all want to go eat, call us. We'll go eat. Praise the Lord. Hey, y'all have a great day. See you in the morning.